In this video, we're going to take a look at how player docs work using the new dockable type object. So there's two samples in this demo. There's a very simple one that is just a chair where the player sits down and their view is restricted to kind of looking at the front of the chair. And then there's a more complicated one that's sort of a simulated arcade machine, um, sort of like a whack-a-mole type of thing. And the player stands there and they can play the game. And then when they're done the game, they can leave and then the, the machine shuts down. Looking at the first one, demo armchair, it's the most basic type of dock you can have. It's just the player is um, put in the chair and they're looking where we want them to look and they can look kind of plus or minus certain degrees that we want and then they can leave the chair if they want to. So um, looking at the inspector for this type, which is the interactable dock script type. So has the normal stuff that the base um, that the base object types have. So don't worry about that right now, but the important stuff is for um, the specific dockable things. So looking at um, seat position and focal point, these are the two things that are children, child transforms of the demo armchair. So we have seat position, which is this purple um, gizmo, and that's where the player's position will be uh, placed. So when they sit in the chair, their position will go to that location. And the focal point, which is this green gizmo with the eyes, that's where the view is centered on. So as we move from our world position to our docked position, we can optionally smoothly move between those positions. And when we're done and we're sitting and docked in the chair, we're going to be at the docked position, which is the purple location, and looking at the green location. So if I run this and show you quickly how it works, when I interact with this chair, I sit down. And now my view is constrained to the constraints that were defined, so kind of just kind of where you would look if you were in an armchair. Uh, and I can't, I can't move or do anything else. Um, if I had an object in my hand, I can, I can still look at that object if I want to. Like if I have a pickup object, I can still examine it. Um, but I, the only thing I can do is kind of sit here and then watch the world go by. And then if I press the close button, so X or B on the Xbox controller, I get up and I go back to where I was in the world. And if we look at the demo arcade cabinet, it's sort of a more complicated state-driven machine simulation where the player can dock on the object and they stand in front of the arcade cabinet and look down at the play surface and the scoreboard. Um, and then once they're done playing the game, they can exit the game. So the way that it works uh, is that there's sort of the parent arcade cabinet that houses the state machine and the kind of gross level colliders and things. And uh, we have our, um, our docker, which is this button that is over top of this go button. So the player, if they walk up to the machine and interact with the go button, it'll dock them onto the machine and start the game. So similar to the chair, we have this purple dock uh, transform. So we've defined that as kind of a standing position in front of the machine. And then the focus transform is sort of if there's players standing in front of the machine, they're looking down at the play surface and a little bit of this scoreboard. So additionally on this arcade machine, we have another interactable thing called the go button. And that's sort of nested underneath the arcade cabinet. It's hard to see because of all the green, but there's a, a large box. And then the go button is a smaller box. That is there um, so that if the player's docked and they play the game and they finish the game, they want to play again and they don't want to have to undock and redock, they can just hit the start button again um, and play another game. So if we run the demo and look at how this machine behaves, we can see that um, it's sort of idle and shut down at the moment. But then if we hover over this, go button, it will dock us. So we don't have to be standing in front of the machine. We have to be standing, we can be off to the side, and we'll move in front of the machine. Let's play. I'll just play for a second. Get a couple of points. Maybe I'll try to beat the high score. Okay, so my score is nine, the high score is five. I'll let the score. game uh, end. So um, the go button, as we mentioned before, is still active even though we've already docked so i can't move and i can't look kind of beyond the constraints of the dock but if i want to play another game i can hit the go button Welcome. and then play another game play. now if i want to leave the game i can just press the get up button or the undock button Goodbye. and then i walk away and that does some special stuff on the machine it shuts down and then i can go back and dock again if i want to so a special note about saving and loading when it comes to dockable objects they have no problem being saved and loaded so for say this chair, I can save my game and then I'll get up and run over here. And then if I load my game, 
I'll be in the chair still so I can get up and then I'm back out of the chair. Now when it comes to complicated things like the state machine or maybe if you want to um, simulate um, a computer or something like that, you'll have some extra accounting work to do. Um, you might want to make a special save type for say a computer system or something like that. In this case, our high score is nine, but the default high score is five. So if I stop the game and run it again, the high score is five. But since I saved my game after beating the high score, if I load my game again, I'll be in the chair again, get up, take a look at the machine, and the high score is nine. So it saved my high score, but that's because that's all this machine is configured to do. If I'm in the middle of the game and I save and load, it'll kind of round to the nearest um, game state, but you can get as complicated and as deep as you want. I didn't make this one complicated for the demo because the reusability for your projects will be very low and I didn't want to include a bunch of extra bloat in the save types uh, to include a bunch of stuff like which frobs were popped up and what state the machine was in and that kind of thing. So um, it is totally fine to get as complicated as you want, but, but in this case um, it was left very simple. We just saved the high score and that's all we retain across play sessions.